What do all millionaires have in common? Multiple streams of income. The average millionaire has over seven streams of income coming in every single month. While you might not be in position to have a bunch of different streams of income coming in, you can work towards that by starting side hustles. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five side hustles that you can do that you probably have not heard about because there's a lot of videos out there on side hustles. I'm going to give you five that you can start to implement, maybe just pick one or two, and then start to build on that one at a time so you can get to the point where you have multiple streams of income coming in, multiple side hustles that produce enough money, you can quit your job or just be more financially free. Before I talk about these side hustles, make sure to give this video a like. I'm hoping to provide a ton of value, just looking for a like. I actually have 10 streams of income that I'm going to go over at the end of this video. But before I get there, let's talk about five you can do. There's even a bonus one in there. The first side hustle is become a virtual assistant or a VA. It is somebody that works for somebody else virtually, just how the word says, just how the description says. VAs can pretty much do anything with technology these days, with smartphones, with internet, with how easily items and documents are shared. They do event planning. They keep track of people's calendars. They write articles. There's pretty much an endless supply of things to do that someone wants to hire out. Usually more remedial tasks, but not always. Just simply helping somebody out and becoming their assistant virtually. It's a great way to get exposed to different types of businesses. And it's a great way to earn some extra money as well. The second side hustle is working with real estate agents. Real estate agents are looking to build their brand and to get their name out in front of as many people as possible. So if you're talking to the right agents and getting approval from them and having them hire you, here's a couple of things you can do. The first is you can put out their signs. Most real estate agents have a ton of those little signs you see on the side of the road. They will pay you to put their signs out in multiple places. They might pay you a couple bucks a sign. You go out and put 50 signs all throughout the neighborhood or all throughout the area and it gets their name out. So you're not gonna make a ton of money doing it, but it also doesn't take a ton of time and it also maybe helps you develop a relationship with that agent if you want to get into real estate or real estate investing in the future. A second way you can help out real estate agents is calling for sale by owner signs and asking the people, you're not an agent, so there's rules and laws you have to look into, but you are not acting as an agent. You're just calling those for sale by owner signs and asking them if they've sold their house and if they would be willing to be represented by an agent. Some of those people don't want anything to do with agents, but some of them just don't know any agents and aren't willing to put in the time and effort to find those agents. So you're not going to get a ton of traction from that. But if you do, that agent will make a lot of money on that listing and probably pay you a good chunk of that. The third is detailing cars. Now, when most people think about detailing or deep cleaning cars, they think it requires a lot of technical skill. It really doesn't. I've had mobile detailers, which is probably what you should do if you're not going to want to set up a whole shop for this, come to my house and come to my office to clean my cars. All it really requires is a lot of hard work. You need, you know, towels and, you know, a vacuum cleaner or some source of water and soap, but you don't need a ton of different tools, just some things that you can throw in the back of your trunk and you can go out and put in the work. It takes a few hours to really, really deep clean a car, pull out the, pull out the floor mats, vacuum in, wipe it down, vacuum everything, clean the outside of the car, scrub the tires, scrub the rims, all that kind of stuff. It's really, really not that hard, but it does require hard work and it does take time. So if you're willing to be a mobile detailer, you can go to people's houses or where they work. You can do a couple cars a day and actually make some decent money. The fourth side hustle you can do is what I did in high school and college, which is painting exteriors of houses, decks, and fences. I didn't have an LLC set up. It wasn't that formal, but I just put out 10 to 20 bandit signs, which are those two by three signs you see on the side of the road that, you know, are political signs or we buy houses signs, those types of signs. We just made a few of them that said budget painting and our phone number, Lucas and I did. And we got calls after calls after calls, and we didn't have a lot of overhead. And you don't need a lot of overhead to own a painting business because brushes are cheap. So you can just put that on the job that you're bidding and the people pay for the paint that are hiring you to do the paint or the stain. So the only thing you really need is a ladder and maybe a drop cloth. So there's not a ton of money that you need to put into that business. And there's not a lot of skill that goes into painting decks or fences. Now, if you're going to be doing interiors of houses and painting trim and baseboards and all that, that's a different story. But if you're just kind of doing exteriors of houses and decks and fences. It's really not super hard to learn and understand it. You can look up videos on YouTube about it, but it's a good way to make a lot of money because people don't like to paint. And we actually did pretty good most summers. Number five does require you having a house or an apartment with an extra room, but renting out things by the room. It's very, very easy to do, and it's becoming more common and more common by the day. You can rent out an extra bedroom in your house by the month, 
or by the year, or you can rent it by the night for people coming in town, Airbnb and VRBO style. So you do have to have, you know, a place where you live with extra rooms. But if you had that, you can actually make a lot of money and not really do anything besides somebody using a room that you weren't using anyway. On to the bonus one. And this is working for social media influencers. I thought I would want to throw this one in there because TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all these social media platforms are blowing up and people are getting more and more followers and they know what to do with. And what really helps people grow their channels, I know because I'm currently trying to grow this YouTube channel, trying to grow an Instagram and trying to grow my TikTok channel as well. Having more activity on those platforms help them grow. If I had somebody responding to every TikTok comment and every Instagram comment and message, that would really, really help my channel grow because those social media platforms want interaction. If I respond or a assistant responds to a comment on Instagram or TikTok, the person that asked that question will then go back to that same video and respond to my comment. And then that video will get watched longer. So it all works together with the algorithms. I respond to a lot of questions and comments as much as I can, but I don't have time to respond to everyone. So I would potentially be willing to pay somebody to, you know, spend five, 10 hours a week responding to every single comment and every single question, because that will help my channel grow. And most influencers understand that and would be willing to pay. So that one's a little bit different. And all you got to do is, you know, message these people on TikTok, message them on Instagram, and you know, you'll probably get a lot of no's, but it is definitely a potential now and probably a growing potential in the future. Before I get on to my 10 streams of income, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. We come out with a few videos a week and we go live as well. So if you want to get notified when we go live and when new videos go out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that notification bell so we can interact. You can ask questions on the videos as well as when I go live, we can interact. So my streams of income are obviously a little bit more mature as my business have developed. And the side hustles that I gave you, the streams of income that I gave you are a little bit more entry level, which is fine. I started out doing several of those. I clean cars a little bit for people in the neighborhood, didn't have a huge business out of it, but I helped clean people's cars. I had the painting business. So I did a few of those, but as I developed my businesses and as I got older, I got into a little more developed streams of income. So even if you're not old enough to have, you know, super developed streams of income, starting out with some of those side hustles that I mentioned will at least start that process for you and it will get you on the path towards getting more developed, higher paying streams of income. All right, here we go. Here are my 10 streams of income. The first one is wholesaling houses. We wholesale about 150 houses a year. The second is flipping houses. We actually fix and flip and sell about 60 houses a year. The third is renting out houses. I have about 90 single family rental houses that pay me income every single month and I get cash flow from them. Crypto. It's not a huge source of income. It goes up and down a lot, but I have made a decent amount of money in the crypto market. It's not my favorite source of income. It's more of a diversification play for me. And I'm not planning on taking it out for a long time. I'm going to ride or die with it. It's either going to do really well or just go to zero. And I'm okay with that. So not telling you to go put a ton of money in crypto. Number five is actually a custom whole life policy. Not going to go into too much detail on that, but it's a life insurance policy that actually gains interest every month and that I can actually pull money from and invest and still get interest on the money that I initially put in the policy. Number six is self-storage facilities. I currently have three self-storage facilities. I'm building a couple of them and adding on, but they produce income every month. Number seven is affiliate marketing. I have companies like Deal Machine and Batch Leads that I give out free trials for so people People benefit from the free trials, the links in the um, description below in this video, but I make a little bit of money off those every single month, not a ton, usually a couple bucks a subscription and the people that actually apply and get that free trial and stick with it, get a better deal. So it's a win-win for us. The people that are taking the hit are the actual platforms that are providing the technology we each get a good deal if you decide to sign up for them. Number eight is social media. I'm looking to grow all my platforms as much as I can. YouTube pays me a little bit, not a ton. TikTok pays me a little bit as well. Instagram, not yet, but I do make a little bit of money every single month from a couple of the social media platforms. Number nine is online courses and mentorships. I don't know if you know that or not because I usually don't push them. I try to just provide free quality information for you, but I do have online courses that teach people how to grow a rental portfolio coming out with a wholesale course soon as well. So I do have those online courses again. Those are linked below in the description. If you have any interest, if you just want the free stuff, I'm cool with that too. Number 10 is property management. I have a couple different property management companies 
companies, one that just manages single family rentals and another that manages self storage and apartment complex. So I don't make a ton from those companies, but we do make a little bit of money every month. All right, those are my main 10 sources of income. I'm always working on more and I'm always working on hiring people to run those companies and run those divisions. I don't actively manage any of that. I have different people that manage it for me. So they get a cut of the pie, but it's completely passive for me. And they're just multiple sources of income and diversification plays for me. So hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you did, as I said earlier, please subscribe and please hit that like button. See you on the next one.